All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be looking at the Garmin InReach Explorer Plus. It's a satellite communicator with GPS and mapping. I'm going to do an unboxing and just a quick initial review on this GPS. Um, I picked this thing up at Gander for $430. I went with it over the InReach Explorer Mini. I felt that uh, this thing was just a little bit bigger. I had less chance of losing it. And I, from what I heard, the mapping is just a little bit better on it and a little more dependable. So I went ahead and went with this thing. And, you know, one of the main reasons I went with it is because I wanted the satellite communication. I'm going to be going out in September to a, an area on an elk hunt that doesn't have any cell, any cell service. So I wanted something... Um, to be in contact with the outfitter in case we kill one and he did need one to uh, need him to come pick us up or if an emergency situation came along the way uh, we'd have something to communicate and also reach back home as you can see this comes with a nice carabiner clip hooks on the back of it and I'll probably have this strapped to my backpack along the way that way I, I don't lose it because it is an expensive unit and I am afraid of losing it I, I like how it has an orange face on it I think it's pretty easy to pick up if you did happen to drop it um, but it's pretty pretty small I mean it's smaller than the size of your hand uh, as you can see here this is where the the clip clips onto and uh, overall it's just it's about the right size and it doesn't feel too heavy it doesn't really feel that light but um, overall it's a good size the clip kind of just slides on and I'm not too sure if this thing could get ripped off or not. As you can see, I put it on backwards a couple times just trying to figure it out. And then was able to get it uh, to slide on there and hold in place. So to go ahead and get this thing rolling, the power button's located up on top, up near the antenna for the satellite. Uh, you just give it a push and a little light comes on and makes a little noise. And then you get a message that tells you that you have to have the GPS activated. Uh, in order to look at anything basically um, you can see the menu is pretty simple you got your preset messages tracking which is probably one of the most useful features uh, a item where you can check your mail you can look back at your routes um, different text messages you can go through stored waypoints you can look at uh, trip info on different uh, routes that you've tracked you can look at your weather your data there's a compass built in uh, SOS you can choose that from the screen as you can see here or you can go on the the side which I'll show in a minute uh, to hit a button over there but there's also a contacts area location history and a spot to test the device and also settings so that's it for the main menu um, you can see the buttons are pretty Pretty simple to work. You just got your standard keypad with your left, right, and up and down arrows. You got a zoom in, zoom out, um, a lightning for your, uh, you can you can select presets for the lightning button. You got a menu button, a checkpoint uh, for selecting, and also an X to back out. So to dive in a little bit deeper, one of the coolest things about this is the ability to be able to send messages back home. And there are two different ways or two different types of messages that you can send. As I'm showing here, these are preset messages. And with this, you have to select one, re one recipient beforehand through a computer. So you can see my name is selected there. And then you can select three different messages. Um, you can pick different recipients for each one of those messages. But you have to send one of those three messages right there in order for it to be free um, when somebody replies to that it's considered a text message received so you will be charged for that unless you have the unlimited plan that was probably really confusing so i'm going to go into explore.garmin.com and go to my account and this is like the home page it brings you to this is kind of where you have to do all your work beforehand and then you have to download a little software 
so that you can transfer it into the device and get it updated, do your software updates, update your contacts, update your preset messages, any map updates that you want to do. This is kind of where you uh, have to work from. Um, so I'm going to bring you in uh, to this homepage here and go click up on plans and devices. From here, you can see your device, your subscription, and the last time that you've synced the device. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on edit for the subscription, change plan, just to see what different options are out there. As you can see, there are three different plans. I'm currently selected on the recreation plan for $34.95 a month. I'm just going to test this plan out. I'm using it to send some text messages, check the tracking, and see what all this device can do before I get it out in uh, Colorado and really break it in. But you can see the cheapest of the plans is a safety plan at $14.95, and the most expensive is the expedition at $65. So looking at the cheapest of the plans, a safety plan, you get unlimited SOS, 10 text messages a month, unlimited preset messages, which are those predefined messages that you select. And if somebody responds to you to a preset message, that still counts as a text message. That doesn't count as a preset message. So you might be charged overages if you go over those 10 messages. And just to drive the point home a little further, text messages defined by them include free form messages. That means you type whatever you want or you receive uh, a message that has been sent to a family or friend or whoever. Those are all considered text messages. So if you have the safety plan, you're only allowed 10 of those. So say you send six and you receive five, well, you've already went over um, by one text message and you'll be um, charged, that, charged that overage. Moving on to the recreation plan, which is the one that I'm testing out, which might be the one that I use, if not the, the higher up one, whenever it comes time to actually take my trip. Um, you get unlimited SOS, just like the plan before. It bumps up to 40 text messages per month. Unlimited preset messages, which is the same thing I just defined. And you get more tracking than you would with the safety plan. It gets every 10 minutes. Um, 50% overage on text messages that exceed your allowance. Uh, but it's pretty much just the safety plan with uh, additional tracking points and a few more text messages. The last plan I want to look at is the expedition plan, which is a whopping $65 a month. Um, that can get kind of pricey there once you factor in your whatever $35 or $30 activation fee from the beginning you're already looking at uh, a quarter of the price you paid for the device. So that really adds up pretty quick. But the expedition plan is pretty sweet. If you want to just use it for a month, you get unlimited text messages, unlimited preset messages, um, which is kind of pointless at that point if you already have the unlimited text messages. And you get more tracking at two-minute intervals. Uh, so that's going to send more points uh, to the satellite back and forth, and you'll be able to really pinpoint uh, where you so just a quick look at the map and the tracking here. It's pretty much just your standard map. It's really nothing too impressive. Um, I was kind of thinking there would be more topo lines, but maybe that's just how it, it works out. It seems like with my Onyx app, I have more information provided, but um, from the looks of it, Garmin probably wants to have you pay more for every little thing, but I haven't really found anywhere where you could get a more detailed map. Um, it's pretty quick to react. I mean, it's not the fastest thing in the world whenever you zoom in and out, but it does a decent job. That might change whenever I get more waypoints in there. Um, but I do like the features where you can add waypoints. Um, you can look on Explore online and actually mark stuff and then have it sync to your device so you don't have to do everything through the GPS. But um, I, I'm really not too impressed with it, but I think... Overall, at the end of the day, it's going to do what it's needed to do. So that that's the most important part. One thing that I really would have liked to have seen is a uh, aerial imagery that you could maybe overlay or I, I should say underlay under the contours on the topo map. I know with Onyx, you're able to, to uh, have those two views at the same time, and that's really helpful. Now, if there's a way for me to do that, uh, somebody please comment out. I'd love to be able to update this thing and do that, but 
um, until then it's you're pretty much just stuck with this one more thing that i'd like to look at is the tracking this is on the garmin earthmate app that i got on my iphone and it syncs together with the gps to show your your recent tracks and uh, this is a pretty good view here i think i was taking every two minutes it was taking a uh, point and saving it so you can see the path that i walk around the lake there and it did a pretty good job it's pretty close and i think that uh, for what it's intended to do it will get the job done uh, it might not be the most definite lines on earth but if uh, maybe if you change those intervals to the one minute interval you'd get it a, a, a better path so um, i'm happy with that and i think that it's going to do everything i need it to do i think the best part about the tracking is something that is called map share i didn't know this was a thing before i bought the device but i figured it out later what it is it's a website that uh, you'll be able to send a link out to as a text message whenever you first start your tracking and your family and friends uh, whoever you send this link to or whoever you send that text message to will be able to see your track points while you're there and they can even respond um, with messages or whatever they want to do with that but it will charge you just as a text message um, but i really think that's awesome i know uh, my parents will love to see where i'm at all day long and uh, it's just another way for people to check in with you and they really don't have to bother you that much they can just kind of see hey you're moving around uh, he's doing something so it gives them a little bit of peace of mind and i think that's one of the coolest things because it really doesn't it doesn't charge you anything extra for once Another thing I'd like to look at is the availability of the weather on this thing. As you can see in this example, I had the weather a couple days ago. It charges you as a text message uh, to receive a, a weather forecast. And it gives you like a three-day forecast basically per message. And uh, as you can see here, it shows whether it's going to be cloudy or sunny or what the temperature is in the percentage of rain or precipitation. It doesn't really give you any wind directions, and maybe that's in the premium uh, package that you also have the option to do, but um, this is just the basic, so you get two-hour intervals for the first 12 hours and six-hour intervals for the next 30, and it costs one message, like I said before, and then for the premium, you get an hourly forecast uh, for seven days, which I don't know what that additional charge is, but I imagine it's it's probably pretty steep based on everything else that you know Garmin has came out with for this GPS. Um, but I mean, I don't really see the need for the premium unless you know I see a big front coming in, or you can tell there's a big change in weather. Then maybe I'll get a premium forecast and uh, be able to prepare a little bit more. I'd like to close out the video by looking at a few more things. Um, the first thing that I'd like to look at is the SOS option. Uh, as you can see, it's in the bottom right corner of the device. It's also on the side. And I was worried about hitting that button on the side when in reality, all you do is open it up. It's just a housing and then the button's actually on the inside. So you're not going to hit that thing on your pack and it's not going to send some emergency alert where somebody's going to come and get you. So don't worry about that. Um, at the bottom uh, is your charging port. Uh, it comes with like a USB cable to hook into your computer or... Uh, whatever accepts that USB, but uh, another way you could send that SOS without hitting the button on the side is on that screen. You can go in there and select it and hit it, and uh, for good reason, I didn't test that out, uh, but I, hopefully I never have to use that, but it's always nice to have it. And if you hit the top button again, uh, that's a way that you can mess with your screen, uh, uh, your brightness, you can turn the device off, lock the screen, and also turn the sound off, which was something I did because I don't want to be on an elk hunt and uh, draw back on one and accidentally hit a button and have it go off. But um, that's going to be it for this review. Uh, nothing too in-depth, but if you guys have any questions left, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and leave this video a like. I'd appreciate it. Thanks.